Hello, this is just a quick little video where I wanted to talk about the whole question on um, earthing back boxes and socket outlets. Um, now, a very well respected electrician who I follow and talk to a lot has posted these pictures on his social media recently and he got some positive, supportive comments, but there was a couple of people that were very, very objective, saying, oh, the NIC say this and da 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 da. So I kind of just wanted to offer my opinion on this. Um, it is my opinion. And the argument. So the argument is the back box. So we have the back box there. We have the multi-core cable coming in. Do we have to earth the back box? Some people say yes. Some people say no. Uh, in the illustrations here, what he's shown as a good practice is he runs a protective conductor up terminates it as per normal the other one he runs much longer he then measures a leg a, a loop to the back box he bends it so it's not a broken conductor and then he applies sleeving over the remain so he's connected that to the back and then he applies sleeving over the remainder to the socket outlet now i'll say it right now this is exactly how i would do this kind of socket so i you know i completely agree with this being, in my point of view, a good practice. But do you have to earth a back box? There's obviously some debate, you know, because the, the lug, uh, I think the NIC passed this long, oh, if the lug is fixed, then fundamentally, if we just do a protective conductor connection into there, the screw going through the plate to the back box being a fixed lug will earth the back box, meaning it doesn't need to be connected. Um, I've always viewed it differently to this. Um, I've always viewed it in a what I would consider a very more simple way. So bear in mind I said I do do it this way. However, do you need to earth the back box? My opinion is no. The reason, my opinion, the reason that the terminal is in the back box is to allow you to bring the protective conductor th from the back box to the socket. Yeah? So imagine if this back box, you see these 20 mil knockouts here. Imagine if the wiring system was a steel conduit system and the steel conduit system itself was being used as the protective conductor. So there was no individual protective conductor cable. The wiring system was the protective conductor itself. Well, the socket outlet would require a connection to the protective conductor. And that is in my view, what this terminal is for. So the earthing would come up a steel conduit, it would then go into the back box and we need to use the terminal to bring the earth forward into the socket outlet. I, um, I do have a picture of, a, a, a very old picture of such a scenario here. Um, it's a rubbish picture, but this is the point. So it's a back box still, it's obviously, it's not flush, but it's a, let's assume it's a flush wiring system. You can see the steel conduits here, and you can see that in the conduits is just the live conductors. So what's happened is the earth is coming up and it's going on in the back box. This is the earth thing going up and going in, moving on to the next point. But this then is the way to bring the earth forward. So it's not in my view about taking the earth back to the back box. It's about bringing the earth forward to the accessory. And this is what the terminal is really for in my view. Okay. From um, the other perspective I want to talk about is do we need to earth it as a exposed conductive part? Because ignoring what I've just said about bringing the earth forward to the accessory as the wiring system, people are saying, well, if I screw this back and it's not earthed, if there was a fault in the back, this could become an exposed conductive part because of the screws at the front. I would then apply a regulation now let's remember the whole point of supplementary bonding earthing is all about complying with the fault protective measure the fault protection measure that we use with the protective measure of ads in chapter 41 
Chapter 41 has a protective measure, automatic disconnection of supply. And one of the ways that we achieved that for the fault protection side was with selecting of a protective device, earthing and bonding. Now, there are some circumstances in chapter 41 that say where fault protection may not be needed. Common examples being street furniture and the uninsulated parts of overhead supplies. If I take you to there now, chapter 41, Protection against electric shock. It tells us about the the uh, requirements here of uh, the protective measures will have a uh, uh, combination of basic or independent provision of fault. The protective measures here, ADS. If I go down to this bit, it says the provision for fault protection may be omitted for the following equipment. And if we get to the third one down, it says if the equipment that we're thinking about requiring fault protection for if it's got an exposed conductive part which owing to its reduced dimension approximately a maximum of 50 mil by 50 mil or their disposition cannot be gripped or come into significant contact with the part of the human body and provided the connection with the protective conductor could only be made with difficulty or would be unreliable now if you think about a screw yeah as mentioned here, note the exception applies to, for example, bolts, rivets, nameplates, cable clips, screws, and other fixings. Now, the screw is there. Think about the socket outlet screw. You can't grab it, and it's going to be slightly flush and slightly recessed. So, in best chances, your only contact with this in a fault condition is a tip connection. So, you can consider that that is unlikely to achieve sufficient contact due to its reduced dimension and so i would consider that it can have fault protection emitted from it which tells me that the screws that fix the accessory back to that back box can be emitted from fault protection because of their reduced size here in this regulation 410.3.93 all right so the question of do i have to earth the back box I would say no, because fault protection is not required due to the screws having a reduced size. I would use the screw in the back box and a flyleaf to the socket only if the back box is the wiring system bringing the earth forwards to the accessory. All right, that's my technical interpretation. But as I'd like to, I'd like to repeat, as I said earlier on, I still would do it this way from habit from considering best practice okay so if you want to say do you should you couldn't you can't you that's my take on this all right but i still would do it this way it's just habit and i just think it's better practice in my view but there you go um that's my uh that's my my opinion on earthing bat boxes all right and why why we do it uh cheers